Someone else that you wrote a p- wrote about on your Substack is Sam Harris um, mm-hmm. and his appearance on Pierce Morgan. I want to just watch a bit of that mm-hmm. and have you respond to it. He's, of course, someone who does not think there's a genocide. Let's turn to why you, why you actually came on tonight. We, we had an sure. interesting debate last night uh, involving uh, several people. One was Mossab Hassan Youssef. He's the son of one of the Hamas co-founders who then renounced Hamas and moved away. Um, and he said this about what's going on at the moment in the Israel Gaza war. Let's take a listen. Any person who put the religious identity above the highest interest of humanity, I have no respect for this people. The majority of the Muslim people identified with Hamas, supported Hamas. Show me how many Muslims out there who condemned Hamas genocide. What was interesting about that is that he was really suggesting that the motivating factor behind the, what Hamas did and why people are supporting them in such big numbers in the Muslim community is because they're Muslims. It's religion driven. Now, you're mm-hmm. an atheist, but what do you think of that, uh, of this idea that it's actually really about religion? Well, I'm going to agree with him. I think it's interesting to, to note that many of your listeners will doubt my ability to to make the the statements of the of a sort I'm now going to make, but they can't doubt that of him, right? I mean, he obviously knows whereof he speaks, right? You can't play the identity politics game with him and say that, you know, he doesn't understand the culture, he's the wrong skin color, he doesn't speak the language, et cetera, et cetera. So let's just just let's you know flag that that particular uh, qualm with what I'm going to say. What I'm going to say is it should just be obvious to everyone, which is that we have a vast number of people in the Muslim community worldwide, not just in the, the, the occupied territories or in, or in Gaza, who are powerfully deranged by religious symbols and, and their religious identity, which is to say it is the most important thing to them, but more important even than the deaths of their own children, right? We're talking about a culture, again, I'm, I'm not talking about just Palestinians, I'm talking about the Muslim community worldwide, in, you know, in dozens of countries, that has produced a seemingly unending supply of suicide bombers over the last 50 years, right? We're, we're talking about societies where phenomenon that should be impossible are, 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 are simply to be expected. I mean, literally like rigging children to explode. Just that, I mean, think of how deranging that is for an army or a police force or an NGO or anyone to have to imagine that a child isn't simply a child, but a child might, in fact, under certain circumstances, be a bomb, right? I mean, that that is the, the situation we're in. We're talking about a society, and now, now I'm talking about the, the Gaza and, and the West Bank in particular, where in their schools, they teach six-year-olds the love of martyrdom, the, the, the literal aspiration to die as a martyr, and the hatred of Jews. And, and many of these schools are UN-funded, right? So this is a... a um, a terrifying situation, which I'm told I've not read Sam Harris. I, I'm perfectly happy to admit that. Um, I'm told he's a smart guy, and I never, I never diminish intellectual achievement where it's real. Just like I wouldn't diminish athletic achievement, I wouldn't diminish musical achievement. I may hate Barbara Streisand's politics, but my mother, who was a connoisseur of music, said she had an incredible voice. I'm willing to defer to that. Uh, uh, So I'm not going to, maybe he's a smart guy, but it's just really hard for me, really. It it strains me. Even as I feel compelled to acknowledge him, from what I'm told, he's an intelligent guy. But these, uh, these statements are just certifiably imbecilic. Um, first, let's just go through them one by one. He says, well, this guy knows from the inside that these Muslims are crazy, okay? First of all, he's not a Muslim. He renounced his Islam. He's an evangelical Christian. Secondly, I thought you said we can't trust religious fanatics, but this guy is a religious fanatic. He's a fanatical evangelical Christian. So why do we suddenly credit his testimony? He's a crazy Christian. 
Before that, he was a deranged Muslim. And the common denominator is he's clearly a lunatic or he's paid well. You know, even there, he looked like he was reading note cards. Um, so uh, number two, let's say he was a Muslim and let's say he was a representative of, of something. How, on what basis do, do we deduce that he's representative of 1.5 billion Muslims? Where did we make that leap? He's one individual, okay? And maybe he's representative of something, but he's representative of a powerfully deranged um, Muslim culture. Then he says that Islam is deranged. It produces a prodigious number of suicide bombers. Okay, there's a large amount of literature since 9-11 on suicide bombers. Does he cite anything? How many? How many? How many out of those one point? He said a, a steady stream for 50 years. I'd be curious. How many uh, Muslim children are rigged to explode? How many Muslim children? I, I would like to know. I think that's an interesting number. You say it's, it's somehow this phenomenon is peculiar to Islam. How, how many people? By his reckoning, I happen to have a lot of Muslim students. They like me by reputation. By his reckoning, every time a Muslim student walks in my class, I should be terrified that he may explode. Well, that's what he's saying. Now, he says that uh, this Muslim culture is powerfully deranged. Okay, I'd like to ask him a question, Mr. Harris, if I may, or Dr. Harris or Professor Harris, whichever it may be. Right now, Israel is committing a genocide in broad daylight, in real time, nothing concealed, like those billionaires who tried to, who have successfully ousted those college presidents, not behind the scenes, broad daylight, no fog of war, genocide unfolding. We have headlines. Yesterday, there was a headline in the Times, 90% of Gaza's population faces starvation. Now, this is not starvation because of crop failure. It's not the Irish potato famine. It's a human contrived starvation, which is embraced by leadership in Israel, the United States government. But also, since we're talking about people who are powerfully deranged. The one month into the Israeli genocide in Gaza, the uh, Israelis, there was a poll done, Time magazine, and a report that 57% of Israelis think that Israel is not using enough force in Gaza. Not using enough force. Now, there's no fog of war Israelis have a relatively free media, and they all have access to the internet, so they see all the same pictures as you see and I see. They see all of those kids, and they think not enough force is being used. Do you know what percentage you think too much force is being used? Do you know what percentage? Two percent. So, I would say that's prima facie evidence of being powerfully deranged. Now, he says these suicide bombers, they're powerfully deranged bombers. They blow themselves up. Okay, I don't think it's a good thing when people blow themselves up. But here's something. I don't think it's a good thing when you blow other people up either. I don't think that's particularly civilized. People don't want to hear it, but I'll say it. Israel is a citizen army, which is actually a good thing, in my opinion. Of course, the religious managed to get ways out, but in general, it's a citizen army. But that, that's a two-edged sword. You know why? Because everyone's militarized. 
Excuse me. Well, no, it's a two-edged sword because that means they're representative of Israelis in general. So when they carry out the genocide, right, right, see, yeah. representative of Israeli society, right. Everyone in Israel is either a war criminal or a vicarious war criminal. Everybody participating in that is they they brought up three hundred, I think, fifty thousand reservists. Everybody participating is a participant in the genocide. Have you heard about how many uh, uh, resistors there are? There are none. Very few, yeah. That's Israeli society. And I don't see, as I said, I'm not going to make a brief for a suicide bomber. However, I don't think there's any comparative rede redeeming virtue in murdering others from high tech yeah. uh, high tech weapons uh, and murdering them with your body i don't see where, where is the difference okay it's true during the second intifada there were israelis who excuse me there were members of Hamas who had strapped onto them explosives, went on buses and blew up the buses. Okay, that was terrible. Uh, I, I didn't approve of it back then. You know, when I approve, when I accept, I accept. I, I never, I'm not afraid to express my point of view as I did on October 7th, where I said there were atrocities, but I refused to condemn or uh, support those who commit the atrocities. Uh, I will stand by my words and let the chips fly where they do. Uh, I didn't support the blowing up of the buses. Uh, okay, that's wrong. But how about targeting hospitals? How about targeting ambulances? How about targeting desalinization plants. Is that better? What makes it better, Mr. Harris? No, really, you, you claim to be a philosopher. I think you got a dual degree in philosophy and neuropsychology. I understand. I don't follow you. What, what, why is that better? Or I think blowing up kit. I have to say, I, th I think it's more cowardly. At least the suicide bomber is willing to sacrifice his, it's not, not very rarely women, I think there has been women, is, uh, uh, is willing to sacrifice his life. If we were going to make comparisons, yeah. I think a suicide bomber actually has at least some raw physical courage. Willing to sacrifice, well, he'll of course say because they're crazy with the right. religion, um, which may or may not be true. Communists were willing to sacrifice their lives. Uh, uh, give me liberty or give me death. Was that religion? Was that religious fanaticism? Uh, there's a whole wonderful tradition of people willing to give their lives. Remember Martin Luther King, uh, the last speech he gave? Yeah. Longevity has its value. Uh, but I've been to the mountaintop. I'm not afraid anymore. Yeah. So was he a religious fanatic because he was willing to die? So you can say, no, that's not the same because with Hamas and the other fanatics, they blow up innocents. Really? Fine, I agree with that. Now, what do you think is going on in Gaza? Hospitals? Where Human Rights Watch concluded that there was no military justification for the targeting of hospitals. Who are you targeting in hospitals? You're talking about targeting the lame, the sick, the nearly dead, and the newborn. That's who you're targeting in hospitals. That's okay. That's okay. You no, know, it, it kind of like it bewilders you how a reputedly intelligent person can say things which are so, just so transparently stupid.